Hello and welcome back to the Bjuglington Review. And in this review, I'll be looking at these, the range of 3D printed rolling stock products from Sam's Trains. So yes, in my hands I have a wagon and a coach and I have more on my desk to show you but basically if you have a paid subscription to Sam's Trains on YouTube you get access to monthly 3D printed wagons you can buy up to five and have them shipped together we can buy one and have it shipped um, but generally it's uh, pretty good because you get a wagon or a coach or whatever whatever the monthly wagon is but you only get seven days to order so there is a limited window because obviously they're homemade they're 3D printed which means, you know, you have to get the order in uh, and have it printed. So I'm going to go over to the desk of these and uh, show you a bit more about them. Hello and welcome to my desk. And here is the first Sam's Trains members wagon that I actually got. This featured in my Christmas episode from last year and is a presents wagon, although I've left off the uh, presents for the sake of the review. And, uh, well, the Sam's Trains rolling stock isn't actually a prototypically accurate model these are not accurate models let's just point that out they are more like toys but they're fun kits and they're actually really good if you you don't want to do a really difficult kit you just want something that you can kind of put together yourself and paint or whatever but they're a good starting point uh, if you're a new modeler anyways but um, basically you attach the buffers and the brake rigging and the couplings yourself. The couplings are 3D printed uh, NEM couplings. So this was the first one that I got and then after that I have another wagon which is a two plank wagon which unlike the Christmas wagon I painted. And so this one is painted just in grey with a brown interior and this is for use on Project Aldwin. And the difference between these, obviously there's slightly different buffers I actually broke off the coupling hook on this one by mistake one day, um, but never mind about that. So I'm going to bring these a bit closer to the camera and actually run you through as as a review. So the underneath is pretty detailed. There's a proper frame and uh, the brake rigging and stuff that you assemble yourself. And um, there's also little peg things that the body is attached to the wagon with but this is the finished article and then the next stage up from those wagons was actually this wagon that I got which is a PAL van now you can get a Parkside Dundas kit for a PAL van but I wouldn't feel very uh, confident making that and this actually came as like a solid unit and if we're gonna be um, objective or subjective or whatever the term is there's not a smooth roof because it's been 3d printed it's kind of uh textured by all the the lines but that's really not that much of an issue if you're just buying it you know to build and, and play with so it came in in brown but it was much more shiny than this so i painted it in matte brown and then i weathered it so and i, I also weathered the roof i painted the roof gray and i weathered that so that's those wagons. And then I also have these coaches, which are now out of focus. But anyway, yeah, these coaches are like Sam's trains. Uh, I think they're meant to be like world's smallest coaches or model coaches. And now prior to these, I did have quite a small coach. I'll just find it in my drawer somewhere. Now this is a Trix coach on a trying brake van chassis with outside uh, coach boardy steps. So it is actually ever so slightly longer than these coaches, making them smaller. I'll just lift this up. Oh, there you go. So yeah, they are very short, but I think they're a fantastic size to go with my Hornby Ruston 48DS. And if they ever release it, the 88DS, 
and I just think they look fantastic. So on the wagons, you can see they are fairly detailed on the outside, and obviously this model onwards, they have screwed on chassis as opposed to little pegs, which is much uh, more, I suppose, professional. Um, you can see that there is a bit of flashing from the plastic, this, this stringy stuff, but it doesn't really affect the look of it. So, you know, but the coaches are really interesting because they come with a separate roof and obviously the chassis is separate as well. And it's not just like a normal wagon chassis. They've got a different kind of look to them. And uh, underneath they're also screwed in. And all of these wagons also have metal axles, which is pretty impressive because you can still get uh, Hornby models that come with plastic ones. So, and as you can see, I've painted the ends black. And on these bits of roof, there's a bit of the end of the coach. So I had to paint that. And then on this side, it's green. And there are lamp irons. But they are, you know, part of the moulding. They're not 3D fitted. The handrails, uh, well, grab rails and the handles are raised up enough that I was able to pick them out in sort of gold paint to make them look nice and shiny. But the really impressive thing is with the interiors because the roof comes off and you have the guards compartment and the seats. But the seats also have um, luggage racks. So in this one, I managed to fill the guards compartment with some, I think they're like model scene barrels and sacks. And then I've got people sat inside and their, their luggage. So that's the inside of the brake coach. And then the inside of the non-brake coach, I have first class, which is blue. And then obviously second class or third class, which is red. And I've put more of the luggage inside the coaches and the coaches also come with little pre um, marked out plastic um, sheeting for the windows as well so they look really good and there's even like a printed texture to the seats to look a bit like upholstery as well which is quite cool I like that effect so that's those and then so the tops come off all of them so I've got more passengers again and in this one I actually fitted the guard so this one will go at the end of the, the train and you can see him through the window if the light will shine well enough, but it probably won't. So I'll just <laughs> match the roofs up again because the two end ones, um, they go in a certain way. I've made it so that the, um, the roof vents all face the same way when the train is assembled. So the little bit here goes at the back so the the roof furniture is actually quite good as well it's not got the um i suppose what you call the fidelity of the hornby um one i'll just drag that out by comparison this is the hornby uh, generic four-wheeler which has obviously the same sort of roof furniture and i don't think the three 3d printed one looks that bad by comparison to be honest and obviously the roofs have the same thing as the power van. They have this lined texture. But when the train is running, you don't really notice it that much anyways. And like I said, these aren't serious models. These are more like sort of toys, I guess. They're just fun, really. Something to build, something to paint, and something to run on your railway that's not extortionately expensive. And I think they actually have, especially these coaches, they have heaps of character as well. So I'm going to put these on the layout in a minute, but I have one more wagon to show you. Now, this green one, the Christmas wagon, is one of the original sort of wagons that he did. It's a four plank wagon. And for one year of subscribers wagons, he released an anniversary edition, I suppose, which is a bit better in uh, terms of quality. So it's this one, and it came with this little um, piece of card, which I've made a little stand for. And it says, thank you for one year of support with members' wagons. You mean the world. Which is quite a nice personal touch, I suppose. And um, the wagon itself is, you know, it it's, looks ever so slightly less chunky. And the buffers, as you can see, are um, a bit better. I'll try to put them side by side so you can see. But the buffers on 
the green one are quite sort of chunky whereas these ones look much more realistic so it just shows you what a year can do in terms of um, your development and this one has obviously a, a, a like a much more realistic looking underframe you know it's much less chunky because obviously after a year of development Sam has obviously figured out you know how to make things look really good and still be quite strong and robust and the brake rigging on this actually came with outside brake levers as well and the brake rigging has brake shoes on it as well which come up nice to the uh, the axles as well but you have to be careful fitting them that they don't get too close so they will just work like actual brakes i suppose but actually yeah this after after one year or even it's only been like six months oops and <laughs> i knocked a bit of detailing off um six months since this wagon came out this one which is more or less the same type of wagon just looks much much better you know it's definitely been improved um so i'm going to take these now and i'm going to put them onto the railway and do a bit of a, a test with them with do some shunting and i suppose do a free rolling test and i'm really looking forward to show you how these coaches look when they're being pulled by the ruston because they look really cool right well i suppose we'll start with the free rolling test so i will use the cow van first that did quite well can the other wagon catch up with it no, I didn't throw the, do that one properly. Hang on. Ready? Get the rust out of the way. I think that wagon's a bit heavier than the power van. Hang on. Yeah. See, they all roll very smoothly. And in fact, I could probably pull them back and just send them off all together to be fine. Yeah, they are very uh, smooth and free rolling. Okay, so we're going to see how well they couple now with the Rustin pushing them on first radius curves. So it should work quite well. Let's put the Rustin on slowly. Are we all couple up? I think so. And then, yeah. Perfect. And now we're on to the first radius curve into second radius S bend siding uh, test. So I'm going to set the points and we'll see how they are being propelled into the siding. Look at that. Well, that seemed to go uh, very well. We'll just pull them back out again. Right, with that test complete, I'm going to shunt them through and onto the layout in the seating area and go get those coaches. I'm going to do a free rolling test now on the coaches, but I'm only going to do it with one because they're all on the same chassis. So, ready? Yep, that'll do nicely. Now it's time to see how well they couple on the first radius curves. So here comes the Rustin. Just reverse it into the station for a sec. Pick up some passengers. And then we'll get moving. All aboard. Oh, that's backwards again. Now, quite frankly, I think these look amazing with the Rustin. If I do say so myself, you know, this is I painted them. But uh, that that's what I painted them to do. And uh, yeah, I think they look great. there for a sec. I'm going to do the siding test so I'm going to actually send the rust around again. 
what I do, I just like to to say a few things, which is firstly, the ability of these coaches is um, that they're so small, which lends them quite handily to uh, space saving layouts. If you've got a really small layout, a little shunting layout perhaps, or you just want to create a tiny uh, branch line or something, if you're stuck for space, these coaches are brilliant because you can have a break coach and a non-break coach and they're about the same length or just over as the new generic Hornby four wheelers and actually only just a bit longer than um, one of the old style four wheelers so you can have a two coach train pulled by a little locomotive and you wouldn't really need that much space at all um, I might try and design something at some point to show that off but they are nice for that sort of thing right i've got my points set up so enough waffling and here we go sending them into the siding and they're very short wheelbases so you, you could probably even get them to work on tighter points than this but why you want to use tighter points than this i just know very difficult but those those went into the siding perfectly and they come back out perfectly as well and now I'm going to send them in at speed. Oh yeah. And they have such a short wheelbase as well that their wheelbase is very shorter than all of those wagons from earlier on. Yes, that's... I'd say that's uh, top marks for that test anyways. We'll just uh, couple up to the, uh, the wagon now. And out comes the Sam's Train's uh, 3D printed branch train. So yes, that's the Sam's Train's 3D printed rolling stock. If you want access to them, you have to pay a £5 subscription. That's the minimum um, for the paid membership to Sam's Trains. And then you get access to them for roughly about £10 a wagon plus postage. And you can have five wagons posted uh, for the one postage price as well. So that's kind of handy. It's on my Sam's Trains trunk, I call it. When I, I buy one maybe one month and then leave it there and then buy one another month. So... Um, I'm hoping that eventually maybe a brake van might come out again so that I can have a brake van for my goods train. Although I can use one of the little branch brake coaches I've got there. So I'll have a mixed train, I suppose. And yeah, like I said, it'd be cool. You could just have a branch line with just Sam's Train's rolling stock. Maybe you'd need a locomotive, obviously. Um, but like, I love the, the pairing of my uh, Ruston to these small coaches because I think it just... It really suits it and I'm really looking forward to the North British Ruston because I think the colours will still match quite well. Um, so yeah, I mean, what else can I say about these wagons? I mean, obviously they're not professional, they're not really highly detailed, but as a model goes, they're brilliant. I mean, like I said, it's an easy kit. They're even now screwed together, so um, there's a bit more quality there. And it's just... Nice to have something new in in the hobby um, that you can do as opposed to just, you know, trying to build a difficult kit. Because I've tried to build depot kits before and the tooling is quite old, so it's somewhat challenging when there's too much flash or things are warped. And, um, you know, it's nice not to just buy something and get it out of the box. Not that that isn't nice, because obviously it is. But yeah, I think it's it's a good thing for the hobby. And there are many people who design 3D printable products that you can buy through websites like Shapeways and Etsy. So there's a whole world out there of other people like Sam's Trains probably making 
these kinds of uh, wagons and rolling stock. And obviously double like double nine, there's a lot of stuff there as well. And then the other scales where there are less ready to run products, there are more three D printed products. So it's a nice direction that they're moving into. You know, people are being able to express themselves with their models and the decisions of which models they want to produce. So um, yeah, I think it's a good thing for the hobby. So I've just popped them down onto Project Aldwin to show you what I meant about having it as a branch train because it only takes up the space of maybe like two Hornby generic four wheelers, but you get a reasonable looking length train. And obviously you can make it even shorter than that if you just had like two coaches or a brake coach and a couple of the wagons to be a mixed train. But um, yeah, I, I can't really fault them that much on anything really. Maybe if you were looking at them as if they were a super detailed model, like from Hornby or something like that, but they're not. They're just fun little models. And, you know, I, I like I said, I really like them, <laughs> you know. And here's the, the wagons as well. They're in the, in the siding. So that's, uh, there's my tip field coach <laughs> on the branch. So yeah, it's just um, a nice little view. And when I eventually have Project Oldwin finished and the wiring's finished and it's up and running properly, I'll be able to do more sort of little clips of reviews actually using it. But I don't have a controller set up to it at the moment, which is why nothing's really running on it. So that's the end of this episode of the Gildington Review. Sam's trains 3D printed coaches and wagons. Would I buy them again? Yes, if they were available again, but there's a different one each month, so there's just lots of variety. And uh, yeah, I think they're great. And uh, maybe you should subscribe and pick one up yourself and see what you think. But um, yeah, until next time, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to my new subscribers. And don't forget you can like and share. You can subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can find more videos in the playlist. There are other playlists for Gilgington on Sea as well. And like I said, Project Aldwin, which slowed a bit over the summer, but I'm hoping in the winter to get more done on that. But uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, happy modeling, run some trains, and uh, I'll see you next time. So thank you and goodbye.